What's going on everybody, Kwaku here, back with another video. Today I have to show you a new build for Windows 11 in the dev channel as usual. You know the drill at this point. It is build 22572, running it right now as you see in the bottom right corner of my screen. And uh, there's a few things that I wanted to run through that they did introduce in this build and a few fixes that were uh, annoying me in the last build. I think it was 22562 uh, or something like that. Um, and one of those fixes was when you right click the start button, it would refresh Windows Explorer. Now it does not do that. You see that I just did it and you heard me do it. It doesn't do that at all anymore. So they did fix that. I did report it last build and uh, it is fixed now a week later. So that's not bad at all. Um, another thing here that they did introduce or fix is um, actually update in fact is uh, Windows Sandbox. Uh, basically, when I type in Windows Sandbox, you see it right there, Windows Sandbox, and you see that, uh, yeah, that's what showed up right there. And also another thing that you might notice as well is Windows Media Player also got updated, uh, at least the icon, not the icon, the name actually got renamed to Windows Media Player Legacy instead of just Windows Media Player. Because as you know, we have a new fluent Windows Media Player or just called Media Player uh, in Windows 11 now. And so they needed to change the names up so people didn't get confused. Personally, people are still gonna get confused if they just read the name real quick because Media Player and Windows is in the name anyway. So I guess Windows Media Player at this point might as well just become, for at least for home users, might as well just become a optional feature that you can just install and it's not installed by default. But that's Microsoft, that's not me. Uh, another thing that got introduced too is an updated uh, redesigned print queue. Um, so now, obviously, I can't show you this at all because I don't even own a printer, but it did get redesigned. I will show you some pictures um, on the blog post when we get to that point. But it got redesigned, has a dark mode and a light mode now, for those of you who love that stuff. Um, it's still version 1.0. Um, and yeah, so that's the redesign print queue. And then one final thing that got, I guess, added in a way is uh, right here. I just installed it. It is called Microsoft Defender Preview. It is loosely similar to what we have here as Windows security. Now, one thing that I notice here uh, with Microsoft, uh, what is it, Microsoft Defender in the preview is that it's kind of a strange, like its sizing is kind of strange because up here, the, ma the minimize, maximize, and or window button and the X button are far larger than every other application. In fact, if I pull up Brave right now and I kind of just put it right below it so you guys can see the difference, you'll notice that these are far larger. The icons are so much bigger um, and like almost touch friendly like versus like Brave and every other you know application that you'll use, it's far larger, which is kind of strange to me. In fact, if I open up the Microsoft Store as a good example, you can get it on the store, by the way. You'll notice too that I believe if I'm, if I'm correct, even the Microsoft Store is uh, panel up here is a lot shorter than the rest of them. It's very strange. And the weird thing about the Microsoft Defender previews uh, bar up here, I'm going to call it the top bar because I forgot what it's called at this point, uh, is that instead of things just changing color or just highlighting when you hover over them, uh, like the actual minimize button actually increases in size. Weird. If you notice, look closely, I might try to zoom in in post. You see it changes in size. In fact, and these ones, they don't really change too much. They just become more bold. Whereas here, they just they, they, they just get highlighted and changed in color. So it's an interesting take. Um, basically, what this is is supposed to be able to have uh, security for all your devices. So this will be available on all platforms, apparently. Um, so you have security on all your devices. As you can tell, this is an iPhone. This is some kind of all-in-one, which looks like an iMac, um, even though they just updated it. And then this looks like some kind of tablet. So it is fluent. It's not really fluent. It's in the middle of the two, I guess, but it's there. You can try it out yourself. I may do a video later on when I actually get everything together, working together for it and see how it works, probably in about a couple of weeks out. Um, so let's go back to the blog post. Um, and there's a few things that I wanted to mention. Uh, as you see right here in Inbox app, uh, Microsoft Family is not an Inbox app. If you are running Windows 11 uh, Home, uh, I am running Windows 11 Pro, so therefore I don't I don't even have the application installed. But if you're running Home, this will come pre-installed on your computer, unfortunately for you. Uh, and then another thing that will come pre-installed on all computers is ClipChamp. Uh, that I do have, and that's the company Microsoft bought 
that um, it was a video player, a video editor. This is it right here. And it lets you edit videos on your computer. The dumb thing I hate about it is that uh, with this application is just like all the modern applications on all platforms, they almost all of them require you to sign in for some reason just to simply do this edit, which is very dumb to me. Um, Clipchamp is included in that where as soon as you click on it, you got to, in fact, if I do it now, you'll see right here that I have to sign in in order to use it. And you see right here, it's not going to pop up. It's going to tell me, oh, your Microsoft account is loading. Do you want access? Sure. Access my info. Do whatever you want. I've sold it already. It's great. Uh, let's see what happens. And then there you go. Now it's going to tell you to go through the stuff. So it wants you to sign in with your Microsoft account on Clipchamp. I don't know for what. Um, maybe to save things. I'm not sure. I'm not even going to fill this out just now. But you're going to have to sign in in order to use Clipchamp. Uh, unfortunately, but it is a video editor. Apparently it works pretty well. Maybe I'll do a test on it in the near future, but that's that. Um, going through further, um, this is the big section that I have to talk about with that's coming soon on Windows 11 in the next week. So as you know, I think Earth Day, I guess, is coming up next week. I don't know. I could be wrong, but Earth Day and some major holidays, um, they're going to be showing up on your search feed. So if you hit your search button, you're going to see this area here, a huge chunk of it is going to show essentially this right here. What annoys me about this is that I'm seeing trending searches down here, and that already bothers me. And I'm seeing these three dots, which means you probably be able to edit your interests and the news that comes to the search. Uh, they're saying that it'll be major holidays and world events and things like that that will appear here. Um, I can't trust it. At this point, it seems like this is another place to inject some kind of advertising for some article that you probably don't care about in Windows yet again. Uh, some, some of you guys probably have a weather icon here, which goes into the widgets icon, the widgets panel. Um, I do not have that still. Um, my laptop has it. Um, so if you don't have it, starting next build on the dev channel, you're going to actually have some other way to view some kind of news and things like that based on hopefully it's just holidays and it's not like Russia did this, Ukraine did this, Iraq did this. Like, I don't want to see that sometimes. Sometimes I just want to be removed from that kind of stuff and just focus on other things. But I have a feeling that that stuff is going to start ending up here. Uh, take it with a grain of salt what I say, but I have a good feeling. I have probably about 90% feeling that that's going to appear here eventually. Uh, more news is going to appear there and you'll never be able to get away from it. And just like, as you know before, uh, almost every link that you click on that is already embedded into Windows will go to Edge. So no matter what your default web browser is, I'm sure it'll end up going to Edge uh, and it'll be very hard to switch it away from Edge. Probably every update might make it back default to Edge. So that's gonna that might be an annoying thing. Of course, this is not guaranteed yet, but I have a good feeling that that's gonna happen, unfortunately. And also peep this icon for this plant, this plant right here. If you notice that the plant is kind of sticking out of the square, um, I'm not sure if this is just a poor Photoshop or if this was meant to be like this. I kind of feel like it was supposed to be in and whoever edited it probably cropped too much or did something. But yeah, so that's 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 the new search uh, feature right there. Um, another thing that's going to be added into the search thing, too, is that um, search highlights, I believe, is that it's going to show more of whenever you're signed into an organization account on your computer. Uh, it'll show some information that you can quickly get to certain people on there and send messages and do things like that. Um, so you can see Microsoft 365. You can see um, today at Contozo and things like that and so on. So there's a whole lot here. I already talked about Starry Night. Um, another thing here, uh, they updated the icon for focus uh, when you're you know, in Do Not Disturb mode. I am in Do Not Disturb mode as I record. So notifications pop up. And this is how it looks like. As they said, it is confirmed for me. Quick Assist gets an updated Fluent icon. That's pretty decent. Um, and then Windows Sandbox, I did a video for that. That one also uh, got an updated Fluent icon. It hasn't really changed at all, but it has a Fluent icon. And I guess one thing I could say about that application, though, is that Microsoft, please add the Microsoft Store to Windows Sandbox. Because if I'm doing a ton of app reviews, I know I'm probably the only one that does this, uh, I would love to just use Windows Sandbox so that I don't have to save 100 apps on my computer and I can just use them, finish them, and then exit out. So that has an updated icon um, right there. And then there's a bunch of fixes. And then they said here, uh, 
when you right click explore or when you right click start, like I said in the beginning, I think uh, it no longer crashes. It no longer refreshes Explorer. Now it just works. So that's pretty good. Um, and then going through, there's a lot more. There's a whole lot of things here. A whole lot of things here. And then I did talk about uh, Microsoft Defender right here that I haven't set it up yet, but it is on mobile. It is on Android and PC. Um, and I'm surprised they're still using a Galaxy S9 uh, icon for this, but whatever. So that stuff is coming. That stuff is what is currently here. And these are those are some of the things that I noticed. I'm sure some of you guys, especially on Twitter, are going to notice some things that I didn't even catch. But at first glance, that's what I noticed. And that's this build, build 22572 on the dev channel for Windows 11 Pro and Windows 11 Home or Windows 11 in general uh, insider preview. Stay tuned for more. We got a video coming out tomorrow looking deep into the desktop in a different experience. So stay tuned for that. We're getting some new changes coming, some major changes coming to the channel. In the next couple months, by summertime, there'll be some major shifts in the channel. So it's going to be a slow period for a bit, but we'll come around, or I'll come around, um, to making things back to normal again. Uh, I'll catch you guys in the next one. Hope you guys have a fantastic day and stay safe out there.